to 57 hours until kickoff to the 2022 NFL season. Huge guests on our show to break it all down. For the first time ever, it is up in Adams, people. Let's go. September 6, 2022. It has been 115 days since I've been on morning television talking sports. I have to tell you, it feels so good to be back. It feels amazing to be in this building with FanDuel partnering on something new, on the future. And I'm going to be here every morning talking sports headlines with the most passionate fans in the world. That's you guys. Thank you for joining. You guys can be part of the show at Up and Adam Show on Twitter. Uh, we got a lot to get to because we are sitting here two days away from kickoff. We've got Rams and Bills to talk about. Baker facing the Browns. That drama. Trey Lance question mark. Brady's playing at 45. Aaron Rodgers and all of that. Where shall we begin? I know exactly where I want to with this very special guest joining us to help break it all down. <laughs> No, I'm going to miss the headset. I'm not going to lie. And the visors, maybe those would appear on Fox on NFL Sunday. Uh, uh, 16 years, of course, head coach, leader of the Saints. You made history in New Orleans, and you're doing it today as my very first guest, Super Bowl champion and new addition to Fox NFL, Sean Payton. Good morning. Good morning, Kay. Thank you. Man, I'm honored, first off, to be appearing on your first show. Uh, so congratulations uh, to you and... Uh, I know we'll tune in. I'll have a lot of time now to watch it. So um, looking forward to talking football. Well, you won't have that much time because you're a TV star now. Uh, I don't know where you are, what's behind you. It looks beautiful, but you have this new adventure you're starting. So congratulations to you. Fox NFL Thank kickoff, you. 11 a.m. Uh, are you ready? Nervous? Uh, I'm excited. You know, the first uh, opportunity was um, a week and a half ago for a preseason game in Baltimore. Uh, we're in Phoenix with Baltimore and we did a, you know, pregame and a halftime piece. And, uh, that there's such a good group of guys and, 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 and girls that, that work there. I feel like I've always been in the NFC. And so we've always been covered by Fox. And so many of those, uh, people I've interviewed with and spent time with production meetings and it really, uh, was a good fit. I love it. And you're, I saw you, you love Isaiah Likely uh, on that Ravens team. I watched your debut. How do you not? <laughs> right? How he do went not? off. Well, maybe we'll talk about Lamar here in a minute because there's so many exciting storylines and question marks. You're going to be in L.A. for Fox. Kickoff is in L.A. as the Buffalo Bills will uh, invade Los Angeles to take on the Super Bowl defending champions. Coach, you are an offensive mastermind. I'm so grateful that you're on the show. And you also faced the Bills last year on Thanksgiving. There's a lot of going up against you in that game. But you saw Allen up close and personal. So what makes him so special? Well, his physicality, he, he's one of those guys, uh, you know, you're kind of reminded of a young Ben Roethlisberger relative to trying to sack him. He's difficult. Um, you know, there's a there's a run element to his game that is very impressive. And I think his arm talent is is remarkable. He can make the throws down the field. But if a play breaks down and he decides to run it or scramble, you know, that's an eight yard gain, not a two or three yard gain. So when you see him up close and personally realize how big he is and uh, he, he certainly improved every year. So he's he's one of the, the rising stars. He's already risen. He, he's special. So he's, he's already risen. Does that mean that the best quarterback in the NFL is taking the field on Thursday night? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I, I, I think one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL uh, will be playing Thursday night. Two of them probably. And yeah. uh, and then I think that AFC West has got some pretty good quarterbacks in it um, when you look at a division. But uh, Allen is, is – and look, we'll talk about this roster lineup I have later, my fantasy roster. This is my <laughs> first time ever playing, and I was lucky enough to draft him as my quarterback. So I'm pulling for him. Sean Payton, you can take the, the football or the, the guy out of football, but you can't take the football out of the guy. You're, you're now GMing and running a fantasy football team. That's oh, absolutely. Perfect. Absolutely. I put it on auto draft like for the last like half hour of the draft and, and ended up with a couple players. Rookie uh, mistake. I'll help you, Coach. Yeah, I'll I know. Help you. It was past uh, 11. <laughs> you mentioned it's past 11. You mentioned uh, the other quarterback. Let's talk about Matthew Stafford. I fully admit 
never a huge believer uh, in Detroit. I got, and I, then I felt like an idiot because he went and won a Super Bowl and it was awesome. The talent was always there. The arm was always there. What is it right now? Was he always this good and I just wasn't seeing it? Or is it this, the system, the playmakers around him? Well, I, I think the one thing at that position, um, and it happens more often than we'd like at, at times, good players maybe end up in the wrong environment, uh, might be the wrong team, it might be the wrong system, and and then find their way to another place, and all of a sudden you see uh, you see success, you see them kind of have a breakout moment, um, and I think that's the case with with Matthew. I, I think. Look, we had a chance to watch and play against him quite a bit at Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, so for whatever reason, uh, you, you don't talk about quarterbacks in that upper echelon unless they're usually in the postseason. And and he just wasn't exposed to, to many postseason games. Uh, and then all of a sudden, he gets with Sean. Uh, you know, he gets with a, a really good defense and, and some weapons on offense. And I'm not saying Detroit didn't have any of those things at one point or another. I mean, certainly they've mm -hmm. had talented players. But uh, the fit was right and the timing was right. And you have a Super Bowl winner. I think you're, it's like you and Drew Brees got together, and it, it's magic. Sometimes it all just sort of clicks at the same time. We'll see if they can do it. He's, of course, dealing with a bit of an injury, and we'll see how that plays out on Thursday. Uh, you know, you won a Super Bowl, made the playoffs the next year, beast quake happens, it, and we, we can't quite get over the hump. It doesn't happen, right? Patriots 3 4 was the last time. I'm in high school. Like, what is it going to take for the Rams to get back, and why is it, in, in your opinion, so hard to repeat as a Super Bowl champ? Um, I think a couple reasons. Number one, it's exhausting. Uh, you know, when you when you play in in the Super Bowl, win that game, and you look back at all right preseason, regular season, you count up all the games, twenty three or twenty four games, however many uh, total you played. Um, it's a long season. It's 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 a full month longer than your opponents. Um, and then number two, I think we we have transition with so many players, almost close to 28, 29% per roster every year. Uh, so th those question marks come up. And and then I think the other challenge is just handling success. Uh, you know, after, you, after you've won that game, um, you know, creating that sense of urgency to do it again can sometimes be challenging. It's certainly challenging, you know, for a coach and it's challenging for the players themselves. So, uh, you know, getting back to that game would be obviously a big accomplishment. And it really makes you appreciate what Buffalo did going four years yeah. in a row. Uh, that's, that's, that's to, to me, that's, uh, man, that's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. They never got a single win in those four trips. Maybe this is the year. I mean, the Rams want to go back and win, but it's not going to be easy. Uh, might be a little easier to kick off the season. No Tredavious White for the Buffalo Bills. I can't imagine Cooper Cup is not going to have his way on the field. Any predictions? How do you see it going on Thursday night? Um, look, I, I think generally speaking, early in the season, defenses are a little ahead of the offense. So, I, you know, I'll see a little mm. lower scoring game. And uh, I'll take the home team. You know, the defending champion, I don't know what the record is on these Thursday night openers, but I think it's pretty favorable for the team that uh, that gets to host the game. And, you know, they're going to raise the banner in that stadium yeah. and uh, the crowd will be excited. So I, that's always a tough environment to play in when you're on the road. I think Buffalo is going to travel well. McVay has an excellent record when it comes to winning the openers to the season. Uh, I want to talk to you about Bucks cowboys because you're brilliant. And also, you have some sort of top secret kryptonite-like file to stop Tom Brady to consistently crush the <laughs> hopes and dreams of the one and only GOAT. You are 4-1 and one in the last five games, games against Tom. How do you do it? Well, I think this. I think we played very good defense in those wins. And if you, if you look uh, at statistically at all four of those games, um, the pressure percentage was up. Uh, I know we early in the game were able to get to him. Um, you know, if he gets time and, and you let the receivers give them access into the, your, into your defense, it's going to be difficult. So somehow you got to disrupt the timing of the passing game, and it's easier said than done. But I would say in each case, we played very well defensively, and then offensively, uh, they were they were 
different scenarios like the Sunday night game. Everything went well. That was two years ago. And, and you know, we scored a lot of points on the road. Uh, the more recent win was last year. I had COVID. And I watched it on TV with you. And, <laughs> you know, that was a real low scoring game. But ultimately, I think that they, you know, we handled the turnovers. And I, I think most importantly, you got to somehow affect that, that, that spot behind the center uh, where oh. Brady wants to where he wants to climb up in the pocket, <clears throat> you have to occupy that spot about three yards right behind the center. I, I don't think you were going to give me that much info on how to do that. Now, does Dennis Allen, who ran the defense, of course, now the head coach, does he have that file? Does he have the secrets? And, you know, he had a, a, a stint uh, with Oakland. It was relatively quiet. What do we need to know about Dennis Allen and how he can handle this this year? I, I think, listen, I think DA's uh, extremely bright. Uh, he's been a head coach. I think that... Um, it's a great situation that he's coming into. I think he said that already. There's a lot of continuity there. Mickey Loomis has been the GM there for, shoot, the whole time I was. Um, and they've got a veteran team. They've got a team, I think, that uh, they've got a team that I think wins the South this year, not Tampa. Um, and and I think defensively you'll see uh, one of the better defenses in our league this year. Peter King just has them. Yesterday he said he has them, I think, as the one seed out of the NFC. I don't know oh, if you saw Oh, does he really? That. Yeah, he claimed them as the one seed. What are your thoughts on that? You think they win the division, and I love to hear it. Yeah, I think they win the division. Um, here's the thing. You know, Tampa, it's going to be those two teams. And I haven't paid a, a lot of attention to what's going on in Tampa Bay's training camp. But I do think that anytime those two teams play, New Orleans knows they can win that game. And, and – I think that uh, that's pretty powerful when, when you have that confidence. So um, I'm sure it'll be a close race and we'll follow it closely. I didn't know that Peter picked him to be the one seed, though. That's uh, that's pretty impressive. It's risky if all, everything breaks right, but you, you're not there. We, I, I love Dennis Allen. I'm, I'm championing him. You're not mm -hmm. there. Jameis looms large. Alvin Kamara, that's a dark cloud. Michael Thomas, I, of course, have faith he'll return to form. But Jameis is such a wild card in this, right? And that's the way he's always played. We've seen him put up a 5,000-yard season. We've also seen him be a little reckless out there when it comes to turning the ball over. But I did see last year before that injury, you really got him to start turning a corner before any of that happened. How do you balance that yeah. out to sort of make sure that you're not – compromising the talent while you're trying to get him to be more responsible with the football? I think it's a great question. Um, you know, it's, it's picking and choosing the opportunities where you want to be aggressive. Um, sometimes you can help him with that, with play calls. Um, sometimes uh, it's the one thing that, that I found with him, which was really encouraging, is he began to understand what won each week. And, and that might change a little bit. Um, but he was playing very well before his injury. And, and I think, uh, from all indications, he's healthy now he's worked his tail off and he's going to take advantage of that opportunity. I think Kamara is going to be fine this season. I, I don't think we're going to see anything on that front until the off season, probably heading into next year. Um, of course there's, there's some turnover. You have a new head coach, but Pete Carmichael has been the offensive coordinator. He, he was for me for, 16 years and, and he's called plays. He's called plays in the 11th season and he called all of 12th season uh, when when I was gone. So um, although there's turnover, uh, that, that change will be minimal uh, compared to the other staffs that completely flip. So the Saints have your support. They are taking the South, not the Buccaneers, who face the Cowboys. Now the Cowboys, lots of talent, offensive line drama, of course, with injuries. What's holding them back? Yeah, well, look, they had a great season last year, and it's it's just uh, it's always disappointing when you put together the, what they did statistically, both sides of the ball. They improved so much defensively under Dan Quinn, and and that you don't you know you don't win that first playoff game, so that kind of overshadows all the things that that went on that were really positive. So, look, I think it'll be interesting. I I, I like Dallas in this game. Uh, I think Dallas's defense uh, is improved again. I think Dan does a great job. Those guys play with uh, with great speed to the football. They'll turn it over. Um, I like them winning this game. Uh, Tampa's got a tough stretch here in the first three weeks. I think they go at Dallas, at New Orleans, and then home versus Green Bay. So that, that's that's going to be uh, 
a big challenge for them. Uh, I'm sure if they could get two of those three, they'd, they'd be pretty happy. You know the schedules for the teams. Sean Payton, you were ready to go, Fox. Hey, Lucky I'm totally to... <laughs> prepared. What did you think you were getting this morning, huh? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't... What have you been up to? I feel you're, you seem very calm and, and uh, at peace with not being on the football field, but I can't imagine that in, in two nights you're watching this game in L.A. that that itch doesn't start, you know, doing its thing, right? <laughs> yeah. <it'll... laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm up here in uh, Gazer Ranch, Idaho. Oh. Um, so golf course behind me, um, it's a little chilly and, uh, I'll be making the trip back and forth on the weekends and, and, and watching just like everyone else, uh, Thursday night. It's kind of hard to believe it's already here. Uh, it really is. It seems like that time has gone by real fast. Yeah. How much is a membership at Gaza Ranch, Google? I'm not even going to look cause I don't know what that is, but I can't imagine. I, I got it three years ago. It was very affordable and I don't know that it is anymore. Okay. okay, we'll talk about that. Um, do you have yeah. any surprises or like things that you're looking at from your offensive mind that we need to be paying attention to? Underrated guys or storylines or just um, um, some guys who you are really excited to see for the season storylines? I'm excited to see I'm, ex I'm excited to see Baltimore. Um, yeah. I did the preseason game and I think that's going to be a team that I'd pick to to be playing in, uh, in Arizona at the end of the year. Um, uh, I like the way that team looked um, I'm a big fan of John Harbaugh's. Um, we've worked together before. Uh, that's who I think comes out of the AFC uh, in, in, in plays. I'm still trying to figure out the NFC, but that was an impressive roster. And, and I think, uh, you know, they're a lot healthier. Their training camp's gone a lot, a lot better. Last year they were banged up, I know, quite a bit. Um, that would be one team. I think the Chargers uh, are another team that have to show progress. Like we need to see forward steps from them. The quarterback's too talented. Uh, they're skilled people. I know they've made some off season acquisitions and, and are trying to beef up their pass rush, but that's a team that I think has got some pressure on them. And I, and I think in a tough division and I, I still don't get it. I still can't get past or overlook Andy's team and Kansas city. I think they're still the team to beat in that division. I think they're the best on both sides of the team, though. Justin Herbert, you want to see improvement. He threw 38 touchdowns and 5,000 yards last year, and he's still developing. He's just getting started. So Yeah, I want to see a little bit more from the win column, and I want to see a team that gets into the postseason. You know, in other words, statistically speaking, he was magnificent. But, you know, we just had that talk about quarterbacks in the postseason and, and all the other things that come with it. And it's time for, for that to happen with him. Yeah, I'm with you on uh, on the Ravens. I've been going very far, but the Lamar thing, should I be worried about that? I mean, is he going to flacco it and get paid after a great season? Yeah, I don't know. Um, gosh, it, it's unusual without the agent and everything. Yeah. So uh, I, I think, look, those things generally play out. Uh, I know those guys in Baltimore will do a great job communicating with he and and the people in his circle, um, John will be real smart and, and handle that, uh, certainly in a delicate fashion, but handle it the right way. Coach, Gazer Ranch looks like it's painted, like Pete, like, like Bob Ross painted it. On This is an insane place that you're at. I'm going to need photos. We're going to take a short break. I'm going to pull up your fantasy team if you can send it to me, and I'm going to relentlessly make fun of it. Is that okay? Yeah, you're going to make fun of my team. Yeah, I am. You, you right. know real football, I know fantasy football. We'll be back up in Adams after this. All right. <laughs> ever show outstanding coach Peyton says hey hey uh, convinced the Saints winning the division Ravens aren't beating the Bills though we'll see all right we've got Fox NFL analyst Sean Peyton joining us uh, Fox NFL analyst and Gaza Ranch bougie member and uh, fantasy football owner for the very first time so you can see you on NFL kickoff every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Fox but let's bring up this fantasy team Josh Allen so did you have the, like what pick did you take him first no, we didn't. We didn't take quarterback first here. A little help from my son. Uh, okay. First overall was uh, was the runner, Jonathan Taylor. Oh, Josh yeah. Allen. I think I selected. Uh, I want to say third. Um, so he's listed first on that depth chart that we're looking at. Was this a six-team league, sir? This is like this is like a nine-team league. Oh, pfft. Sean. Right. 
Sean. Listen, it's my, I'm just getting in the water, Kay. I'm not going to just jump into the deep end. I'm just you learning have, how to play. You have the best quarterback and the best running back in fantasy football. So you scored there. Um, so I have a good draft. You did a great draft. You auto-drafted after the 10th round. I don't, I don't, I don't even know what to say no, about I that. I auto-drafted the kicker, and, and as I'm sitting here looking at it, yeah. a, a little concerned that, look, is he going to get the opportunities? I mean, I don't know. Uh, the kicker was auto-drafted, so I what can't you, take credit for that pick. What are you saying about kickers, that you auto-drafted one? It was just past my bedtime, and I just I went to the little auto draft section, and it, it just went to sleep. Now, if we go to the division that you uh, were a part of for 16 years, 15 seasons, uh, you have you do you were pretty objective in grabbing Kyle Pitts, who I happen to think, and we'll talk fantasy football here in a little bit. I think he's going to be the best tight end in fantasy football this year. What did you see? You saw him up close and personal. Uh, I just see a guy they're going to have to target. Uh, you know, there there's. X amount of weapons with each team. Uh, and I would say Atlanta's as they're trying to build, um, they're going to have to get him the ball. Uh, and I think they'll find, I think they'll find the, a ton of ways to do that. He, he's someone who's long and I think naturally has good hands. And I, I think he'll have a, I, I, I agree with you. You're going to see a little jump in, in his statistics, uh, uh, this upcoming season. Um, I don't think there are a lot of weapons on that offense. You yeah. know, and so ultimately someone's got to get the ball. And you, you take the Saints defense. Tell me about that. Yeah, uh, they take the ball away. I like that. Um, and I also like their, 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 uh, their return game, their special teams. I think Darren Rizzi's one of the better special team coordinators in the NFL. You got the threat of, uh, of one of the best punt, punt and kick returners in the NFL, Deontay. Um, so I like that. That was easy for me. That that because at some point, and I think that was we, we got into the defenses and special teams probably around the fourth or fifth round. Um, but I, I felt good about that pick. And now you have the waiver wire. You understand how it works? Um, not quite yet. I'm gonna. I'll be. I'll be up to speed on it. Um, I like this this receiver from Dallas. Obviously. Yeah. What don't you like about this roster? I don't, I'm, I was joking. I hadn't really seen it. I saw you got Josh Allen and Jonathan Taylor, and I just figured it was a, like a six-team league or something. <laughs> or, or you were in a league with people who are trying to make another Netflix. Maybe it's like Kevin James, and he's letting you do what you want because he wants to play you again in round two of a Netflix film. I don't know. <laughs> this, is, this is a make Sean Payton feel good league? I don't know. I, I, I can't believe. I mean, Mike Williams is an absolute stud. He's going to be a thousand yard receiver. Justin Herbert's going to throw all the time. Miles Sanders as a flex. I, I don't know what you make of the Eagles. I like him quite a bit, but never trust their run game. And I've never been able to trust him, unfortunately. I love him. Uh, yeah. I don't know. You're, you're, I guess your kicker needs work. Yeah. I Look, the runner for Philly Sanders, it, that was one. Uh, he, you know, he didn't put up, they run the ball as well as anyone in the league, but yeah. they do it in so many different ways. It's, it's a little bit like, you know, it, it could be, uh, the points can, can get spread around. We <laughs> were, we, <laughs> Go ahead. no, we were a hard team though, that when teams have a lot of different weapons and, and good design, I don't know that that lends itself to consistent fantasy predictions. And I, was, I think we I were was a about hard to offense. Say. I was about to say, the reason that I'm worried about you, and I hope this isn't some big money league or like you have to get a tattoo of, uh, I don't even know, an Atlanta Falcons logo or something if you lose. I've hit you up in the in the years past, full disclosure, like, sir, do you think it's more of like a Alvin Kamara game or a Michael Thomas game? And, and you are always kind and always, but you're always wrong. You've never been right. <laughs> You've literally never led me in the right direction, not once. And you know it too. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I'm awful at trying to predict those things. And the only constant in 16 years was that Breeze was going to play well yeah. or play well for fantasy. Um, there were so many different players that the ball could go to. And he was one of those equal opportunity distributors that I know that can become difficult then in predicting, uh, predicting scores and touchdowns. But my, my, my son's first exposure to fantasy, he was 10 years old. He played with some older kids from the beach. They had their draft. I said to Connor, this was in 2009, I said, hey, in the late rounds, grab this Mike Bell. He's a free agent running back we signed. But I knew he was going to be 
you know, in our short yardage goal line package. And so Connor goes ahead and he's all excited. He, he's playing with these older kids. He drafts Mike Bell late. And that weekend, it was still preseason. Mike Bell had 170 yards rushing, I think, in a preseason <laughs> game. So I'm not sure if they, they, they threw Connor out of the league for insider trading. Um, that's the only time I've been right, I think. You're never right. You're, and you're always like, you're always feeding Colston. I'm like, do we, can we not give Colston the ball for like one minute? You were always doing the thing that I didn't think you would do. <laughs> but that's what you'll realize if you're a good coach and you're an offensive mastermind and you're, you know, like Belichick's backfield, you can never play any of these guys or count on them because he mixes it up just like you did and just like you will at some point when you come back to the NFL because that's a safe bet I would make on the FanDuel app or FanDuel.com or whatever that we will be seeing you uh, back in the league at some point. But for now, you we're on Fox, 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, and we can't wait to see you and cheer you on. I can't wait to to be back on your show, and I appreciate, I appreciate being the first one. I mean, I, I'm honored. I wouldn't have anybody else, Coach. You're the best. And go enjoy some, what, like golf and, like, massages this morning? I mean, what even happens in Gaza Ranch? I don't even know. A nature walk? No, it's going to breakfast club this morning. Um, so that'll be uh, just a round table of a bunch of us just chatting and then golf. Uh, in the afternoon, yeah, and then out on the lake on the boat. Who's on? Who's at that table? Uh, it's a pretty important table. Um, <laughs> a lot of hockey players, former hockey players. Um, the great Gretzky uh, is usually holding court there, and uh, let's see, Pat Burrell, former baseball player. Do you want to trade Kelly lines Chase. with me? Yeah. Well, I, I'm terrible at fantasy. How would FanDuel want to hire me? because you're Sean Payton and you're at Breakfast <laughs> Club with Wayne, oh, you know, some important people, Wayne Gretzky, whatever. You're insane. You got a movie made about you. Coach, you're the best. Uh, you took a lot of time for me today, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. All Thanks right. for having me Coach on. had it right. We got to talk some fantasy. We got more. I got my bold predictions. I've been gone forever. I was in Africa. I was on like a Kayahuasca finding myself. Who knows, but I've got to set the table. Season starts in two days. We'll be back.